We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live boxing ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Gennady Golovkin may face Camille Zermeta. We unpack. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chat channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We working. We unpack coming to you live. Make sure you guys smash the like button. Coming to you live. Now, I talked about this, I did a live stream, but I like to do these unpacks. If you're new to the channel, what unpacked is is more of an in-depth look at a certain topic in the sport of boxing, the combat world. And I want to spend some time just unpacking it and giving some detailed, deeper thoughts on the subject matter. And I think Gennady Golovkin has reached kind of a crossroads in his career and it's very apparent that it looks like he's trying to find the path of least resistance um almost a sense of entitlement and i don't know why DAZN is kind of supporting this behavior as well they're supporting this behavior allowing golovkin to have almost this diva type of approach to the middleweight division and it's really shocking and I don't think it's good for Golovkin's legacy and I don't think it's good for DAZN as a brand and as a new company who is expecting and hoping to grow and they raise their price points and stuff per month. I just don't think it's a good look for for them to to allow for this. Now, Mike Coppinger in The Athletic, they reported that Gennady Golovkin had hey, no guys at Mox. He may fight his mandatory Camille Zermeta. And I just don't think it's look at you. Here's I got some of the stuff pulled up. This is Golovkin's resume. 40, 41 and one. One loss to Canelo and one draw to Canelo. Five, ten and a half. He's 70 inches tall. He was in a very tough fight with Sergey Devranchenko. Devranchenko, at the time of fighting Golovkin, he was 13 and one. His only loss was to Daniel Jacobs and Derek Vinchenko. I really feel they were fighting for the IBO title and the IBF. I feel bad for Derek Vinchenko. I think he really beat Golovkin and that's just this all to it. Golovkin looked poor. It didn't look like the traditional Golovkin that was on HBO. And it, it, a lot of people, not just myself, believe that Golovkin is, is kind of teetering on the the you know, last chapter or the end of his rope in terms of like big fights and what he's been built up and what he's been hyped as. Now for this information to come out with The Athletic and Mike Coppinger that he might fight this guy. So you guys can see. Camille Zermeta has a record of 21 and 0, five knockouts, and he has a 23... <laughs> I mean, it's just, this is funny, man. He has a 23.81% knockout. Look, it might be transverse, but you guys get it. 23% knockout ratio. Very light. Um, he's 29 from Poland. He's shorter than Golovkin. And he really, his last fight was against a guy 27 for Oscar Cortez. Before that, he fought Edwin Palacios with a 12-9 and one record. He fought a guy, Andrew Fran Select, 21-1-1. Ruben Diaz for an EBU European title, 25-1-2, 33-2. In 2017, he fought a Sebastian Skitsinoff. His record, he had a losing record. He's 12-14-2. 9-3-2 uh, was his previous opponent, 29-9-1. That was a mutual opponent with Golovkin, Kasim Uma. Uh, Golovkin actually struggled with that, that opponent, but this was some years ago. 
And, you know, Kasim Uma is the only name that I even recognize on here. So, needless to say, I don't know exactly how the rankings work. I don't know, you know, how Camille Zermeta has reached this, this echelon of being Golovkin's mandatory. But it's really not a fight that I'm looking forward to. The other thing is, we can't use the mandatory excuse with Gennady Golovkin. Here's why. Because Golovkin seems to pick and choose when it's applicable. Golovkin, he had last year, all the belts except for the WBO. At that time, Billy Joel Saunders had the WBO belt. So, he had obligations having all the belts except for the WBO. He was, his mandatory was Jamal Charlo with the WBC. And then with the IBF was Sergey Derevinchenko. And when Canelo Alvarez failed a drug test on February 17th and February 20th with Clint Buterol in his system, this is last year, they already had Canelo and Triple G2 scheduled. Canelo failed two drug tests, February 17th and February 20th, and it put the fight in danger. And then, you know, the inevitable happened. Canelo got suspended for six months, no fine. And Golovkin had already been through, you know, pretty much almost done with the camp. So he said, I'm going to keep the date. And in doing that, the IBF told him that you got to fight your mandatory. We were going to move out of the way for you to fight against Canelo because it's a big fight for boxing. But seeing how you're not doing that, you know, we need you to fight your mandatory. And that was Dervinchenko. Instead, he opted to fight Vonis Matarosin, who was on a two-year layoff and was coming off of a loss and wasn't even a middleweight. This is what Golovkin's team decided to do, you know, and if you look at it, this is Golovkin's recent history. You know, when he's not fighting Canelo, the names have been very poor, especially at this chapter, because he waited for Canelo. Look, Dervinchenko, before that he fought Steve Rose, then he fought Canelo, and before that is Vonis Matarosin, you know. He fought Vonis Matarosin, and it's like, Vonis at that point had a record of 36 3 and 1 and was coming off of a loss. You know? It doesn't even make sense. And just to show you, you know, because the new media way, Golovkin, Edis Londi Lada. He fought Edis Londi Lada May 21st, 2016. And didn't fight Golovkin until May 5th, 2018. So, you know, it's definitely like two years. And as you guys can see, look at Vonis. This is his, look. The reds represent losses. So the top one's Golovkin, but the one before that is Adelani Lada. And then he had a win, and then he had a loss right before that. So if you look at, in his last four fights, he won one of them via majority decision against EJ Smith. But the other was the loss to Jamel Charlo. See, this is what I'm talking about, you know? So that made no sense. And again, Golovkin and, and the Golovkin apologists and the man fans, they can't keep using that as an excuse and say, oh, he has mandatories. Because I noticed that not just with Golovkin, but in general with boxing, when the mandatory is somebody that nobody wants to see the person fight, then all of a sudden it's conveniently utilized. Like, oh, um, he has to fight this guy. But when it's a mandatory like Charlo, when it's a mandatory like Dariyevchenko, when he was undefeated before he lost to Daniel Jacobs and he was ordered to fight Golovkin, then we can't see that fight. You know, it just is bullshit. It doesn't make sense. Beyond that is... I've looked at the IBF on, They tell you the rules on their website. You can find all the rules and everything. And what I've seen on there is you have a certain time frame. I believe it's a year to really fulfill your mandatory duties. Golovkin just now got the title. You know, he just got the title. So for him to be due up for a mandatory by January, that seems a little bit shocking to me. You know, that seems a little bit out of the normal especially when they they just because before that as i mentioned 
he got stripped of the IBF title for failure to fight Derevinchenko. And then Daniel Jacobs fought Derevinchenko. He fought him for the vacant belt. So right after Danny Jacobs, Jacobs, that performance and that fight and him getting a title lured Canelo in for a unification. So I can't imagine how the IBF would say, hey, you got a mandatory that quick because the belt was just vacant and Danny Jacobs just fought in a unification. So it's not like Danny Jacobs um, got the belt through a vacancy by beating Dariyevchenko and then all of a sudden Danny Jacobs just went a year and started fighting other people, non-unifications or anything, and went a year without defending successfully defending against a mandatory so that doesn't even sound like a logical excuse to me so you know the walls are closing in on Gennady Golovkin and I told you it's been this way for a while people are blaming Jonathan Banks I mean it, you, it takes time to develop a chemistry you can't blame Banks for it like how you gonna blame Banks for Golovkin getting hurt to the body you know was it, what did what did Banks do in training that you know made Golovkin all of a sudden more susceptible? To me, I think Golovkin has achieved a level of success in money with uh, the Canelo, you know, really chasing the Canelo fights, and I think he's lost some of that edge, you know. Plus, Canelo beat him, and you can tell yourself that you won easy and this, that, and the third, but Canelo, to me, clearly won the second fight and put a beating on Golovkin for the first eight rounds of it. For the most part. And I don't think Golovkin really believes that he destroyed Canelo. He's just kind of going off the the fanfare because there were people who were on his side and, and saying that he won. But I think it's ridiculous what DAZN is doing for them to allow Triple G to be held to such a light standard for a former unified champion. And he gets to fight mandatories. Meanwhile, Canelo got to move up to 175 and fight Kovalev. They literally said that they put out two names and said, Canelo, you must fight Kovalev or Triple G. So why is Canelo held to this standard? Canelo is the number one star on DAZN. He's put up two of the biggest events that DAZN has seen through their boxing programming since they, you know, opened up in the U.S. And that's the fielding fight and then the Jacobs fight. The Jacobs fight is the number one fight on DAZN so far for their boxing programming. So... Why is it that Canelo has to do all this extra shit to you know, prove his worth or justify his pay, but Golovkin's getting paid handsomely to fight guys far lesser than Kovalev, you know, far lesser than Jacobs. And it's just, it's funny to me. It's funny. You see these double standards. We talk about it all the time on the channel. I talk about it. Make sure you smash the like button. And it's like, if you have the complexion for the protection, then they, they try their best to allow you, old media tries their best to allow you to get away with the stuff that you know they would not let other fighters, namely black fighters, get away with. You know, like Triple G having a tough fight with Derry Vinchenko and then he gets to just bounce and then go fight whoever he wants to fight. You know, a non-puncher at that. Why not fight another dangerous puncher? Because they don't want to put him in a dangerous fight because for whatever reason, DAZN keeps trying to preserve this Canelo fight, and they think that's this is the fight that fans are clamoring for, and I, I just don't see it. I, I think the fight has been chipped away at. Canelo himself has said it. He says the fight with Golovkin. If I do fight him, I don't want to fight him, but if I do, I already told my promoter I would just maybe do it just for business, you know, for the sake of business. But I already handled my business with him. I already have 24 rounds with him. I just showed y'all in the second fight that I'm better than him. I beat him. There's no re real gain there. I want new challenges. That's why I'm moving up to fight Kovalev. What has Golovkin done? You know, I'm paraphrasing, but this is basically what Canelo says, and I agree with him 100, 1,000 percent. What has Golovkin really done? And it's sad that DAZN has all this quality in terms of the talent pool from 60 to 68, yet and still they're not enforcing some of these matches and they need new subscribers they need dedicated fans to purchase and buy into the brand right you got billy joe saunders you got canelo you got danny jacobs you got demetrius boo boo andrade who is criminally i repeat criminally being overlooked for an opportunity 
You know, we want to see how good Andrade is. He's talking the talk. He even got in the ring on Golovkin. And they're talking about Camille uh, Sears Meta. You know, they got Caleb Smith. Billy Joe Saunders just went over. And everybody I mentioned, minus uh, Canelo, is now with Eddie Hearn. How can he pull the trigger? How come Eddie Hearn can't give us Amir Khan versus Kell Brook? How come we can't get Billy Joe versus Caleb Smith? How come we can't get Demetrius Andre versus Triple G? Again, the walls are closing in. And I, I believe you're marketing to Americans. Th this is the hard push because if you look at the zone in Italy, you look at the zone in Japan and Canada and these d different areas and regions, they still have the 30 day free trial. But in America, they don't. You know, America, they hiked up the price and stuff like that. This is the market they're trying to capture. You have to give the fans what they want. This is, is that simple. And I think Derry Ivanchenko, based on what he's done for his career, he was he was robbed, you know? That's, that's what it was. He was robbed and I don't like it. And I don't think it sits well with the boxing public. Nobody should be encouraging or supporting Golovkin just moving on to somebody else. And even if he did move on to somebody else, why is it for a former unified champion? Why is it not someone quality like Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade with the zone? Move up to 68 and challenge yourself with Caleb Smith, right? It's just like Golovkin sitting up here thinking he's owed a Canelo fight. It's a bad look, yo. You know, why is even even the Rocky Fielding fight, you know, we knew it was going to happen. Caleb Smith knocked out Rocky Fielding. And even though Canelo's moving up, we knew uh, Fielding probably didn't have a chance. But Canelo's at least stepping out of comfort zones to try new weights. 164.5 with Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and fighting Rocky Fielding and now fighting 175. There's some danger, especially Kovalev is the, the best bigger guy Canelo is fighting higher than 160 for sure. But, you know, I still see some vulnerabilities and stylistically, I think it favors Canelo. But, you know, you can't sleep on Kovalev totally and say he's like a bum or anything he's he's off of two very good wins with um anthony yard beating an undefeated like stud and then beating uh leader alvarez who knocked him out previously so you know it is what it is it's it's criminal it's criminal that demetrius andre ain't getting a shot it's criminal that canelo got to move up to 75 and keep proving his worth and step out of comfort zones and fluctuate his weight but then triple g is supposed to be they, they just said, old media just said, HBO, ESPN, they all pushed this. The zone, they all pushed this, that Triple G is number one pound for pound. You know, they all pushed this and said he's a big ticket. But how come Triple G doesn't, it's like he's not being held accountable for nothing. His, his numbers in the box office with the viewership and the ticket sales look inadequate. You know, the zone doesn't really... Uh, release numbers but from what i've seen from the crowds and excitement for the fans it's not up to par for what he's getting paid for you know that doesn't seem sustainable and i'm, I'm just curious if somebody can explain how triple g has equity with the zone how triple g has um less prerequisites and requirements that he needs to meet whilst being on the zone whereas everyone else has to take tougher fights like maurice hooker got to fight jose ramirez and Dillian White got to fight Oscar Riva. You know, these are these are good fights. Joshua got to go straight into the rematch of the guy that dropped him four times and beat him, Andy Ruiz Jr., and give him a full count. But Triple G, out of all their stars, seems to have the, the least desire to fight a big name unless it's Canelo. And again, that Canelo shit is dead. Like, I don't think anyone's really tripping off the Canelo fight anymore. You know, that's my honest opinion. I think Golovkin, as it sits, he is one of the most overhyped, meaning the hype has not matched. He has not been able to match the hype that he's been given from boxing media, HBO, ESPN. They really put him on the top 25 of the last 25 years list. Put him before legends like Winky Wright and Miguel Cotto and, you know, a ton of guys. And he just hasn't accomplished that. I haven't seen that. You got to look at it like, Name one fight where there was no controversy that Golovkin got past an elite name, a guy with momentum, a guy that you thought could really trouble him. or All of his fights like that have been close. Two Canelo fights, Jacobs fight, I thought Jacobs beat him. And then Derevchenko did probably better than all of them. And I thought Derevchenko had a great game plan. He hunted the body. He stuck with that. He was out jabbing Canelo. I mean, excuse me, he was out jabbing Triple G. He landed the more authoritative shots. He had more power shots. 
He was in there tough and dealing with the cut, fighting back. So he showed tremendous heart and tremendous um, guile and, you know, just showed that he wanted to be there. And he learned from the, the first title shot. He was really going after the title. I think that title is his. And to see DAZN just squander what could be a great rematch between the two is, is just is really laughable. And I don't see what it does to benefit their brand like that. You know, Triple G should do what's right. I seen his own post a graphic with Saunders, Canelo, Andrade, and Jaime Munguia, right? And they said, who should Triple G fight next? So my thing is this: why post? Why why does the zone do stuff like that if they have no intentions of making Golovkin actually fight these people, and they have Golovkin um, likely to fight Camille? Sir Meta, you know what? It, what it, honestly? What is the point of posting these graphics if you're not going to here? Here it is. Look, and they don't have Dear Ivanchenko. They don't have nothing about Dear Ivanchenko. It says who should he fight? Caleb Smith, Bevo, Andre, Canelo, Saunders. You know, has all these names, and you know damn well he ain't fighting none of them next because they're trying to preserve this Canelo fight, right? You know, so the walls are closing in. We'll see how the zone plays it. Hopefully the pressure, you know, they got Billy Joe Saunders fighting an unknown guy. Usyk, his opponent, got to get switched at the last minute. It's just a lot. It's just a lot of it. They, I hope they don't have any more pullouts or drug test fails because I don't think they can afford it. Any other major uh, matchups, marquee matchups. And, and again, we'll see if the pressure um, makes them redesign the game plan for Triple G. But... He should do his right and fight a quality name, um, especially Dare Vincenco. He should be at the front of that queue based on what he did. He showed heart, and he really deserved that title. That's my thoughts. We unpack coming to you live. Let me know what you guys think. If you like or love what I'm doing, smash the like button. Um, reach out to me. Leave me a comment. Drop your thoughts on Triple G. Something's got to give, people. This is boxing, and this is the new me new media era. So we unpack coming to you live. Let me know what you guys think. Triple G, he really should step it up, especially if he's supposed to. They keep saying, suggesting he's a Hall of Famer and has like this crazy legacy. I, I don't see it. I don't with the names he's fought. I don't see this crazy like legacy. I don't see this um, illustrious career that people. I feel like he fought a lot of undersized people. Guys moving up. Canelo was moving up. Ashida was moving up. Um, Gay Rosado was moving up. Vanas Matarosin was moving up. He fought a bunch of no hopers like Adama, who I've never seen fight. Gregor's Praska. And he got a lot of spins and a lot of play based on that. And I think people are, are coming to realize all these things that I'm saying because you see it even with like people who are diehard Triple G fans. They're telling you, they're like, man. I, I'm a huge Triple G fan, but this is just really disappointing. And that's what it is. This is about the sport of boxing. It's not about me. It's not about new media or, you know, bashing someone. It's about the sport of boxing and, and representing that and growing that and making that flourish. And you, you have genuine Triple G fans that are getting, um, you know, discouraged and just disappointed moving on to other fighters and stuff because they see it. It's like Triple G, it looks like he really wants to just get a paycheck. And I have no idea why Design would, DAZN would um, offer Triple G this six, seven fight deal at age 37. And it looks like he's like on the downslide, on the decline more than in like, you know, going up in terms of any type of skill level or getting smarter, evolving his style, improving his defense, you know. And the other thing I mentioned, and a lot of people aren't mentioning this, is whether you like him or not, Abel Sanchez helped keep Triple G relevant, you know what I mean? Because he would say controversial things. He would do this and, you know, have people talking. People would be like, oh, man, I disagree with Abel or I agree or that interview was crazy. Now he's with Jonathan Banks and he's even his career is even more muted because you have two similar personalities. Triple G's making all his money, so he ain't going out of his way to promote, you know. And then Jonathan Banks, it's not really his character to do a bunch of interviews and, you know, say a bunch of crazy shit. So it's just Triple G's just steadily on the decline. 
And, and like I said, it's to the point where his own fans are telling you the same thing. They sounded like new media. People are getting tired. They're starting to see what I've been telling you about Andre. When is Andre going to get his shot? When is Charlo going to get his shot? No longer are they going to do this, especially the black fighters. They're not doing that no more. You know, this is the new media era where they'll criticize Charlo and Andre and certain guys for not having a resume. But you know why they don't have a top name in certain top names in their division. You know the reason. So we bring in justice to that and we bring it back. The pressure's on Triple G and the zone to do what's right for boxing. If you win, you win. You lose, you lose. We got to get out of this habit of like trying to manipulate the board and you know put Triple G in, in fights that are easy to predict to the point where they're, you know, if something like Tyson Fury auto wallet, that just happened how it happened, but that wasn't the rightful fight that should have happened. You get what I'm saying? So occasionally, especially this year, we're seeing a lot of upsets from these underdogs, but we could also imagine if, if he fought Charlo or if he fought Andre, you might get fight of year classics with two big names. And I think ultimately they, that's going to uplift the sport more. When you get two rightful fighters like Sean Porter and Errol Spence fighting each other, you know, both at an adequate part in their career and primes and, you know, and their bigger names. If anything, fighting even the Dariovchenkos and the Adamas and Steve Rose, that doesn't really do nothing. If anything, that just opens you up for a lot more criticism. Because if you look shit or, you, you know, it's perceived that you lose or you're getting touched up, then people are like, damn. You get touched up by that guy. We don't even know who he is. So the Camille uh, Zermetas and shit like that, you, you better off just putting him in with a big name and may the best man win. And that's my honest opinion for DAZN, my honest criticism. Uh, let me know what you guys think of Triple G. It's just been atrocious with the, the picking. And, you know, I'm not, I don't hate on nobody's money, but I, I don't see how that's sustainable to pay $15 million in these crazy paychecks for fights that you know they ain't gonna bring in no real traffic or viewership or does nothing for boxing or the division like Camille Zermeta, you know? And I've already said this, you can argue, oh, it's a mandatory, Triple G's a champion now, even though he shouldn't be because Dervinchenko is the real champion, but as it sits, he's a champion. So him fighting Demetrius Andrade, Bubu Andrade, that's a unification. So that's, that trumps and supersedes any type of a mandatory being ordered plus he just became champion and the previous champion was in a unification Danny Jacobs so I, I can't see how you the IBF would enforce that he must fight the first quarter of the year in January February or something and fight a mandatory so that seems like bullshit and he was in a war he was in a tough fight so they're trying to give him a break with a non-puncher but he, he's at the tail end of his career he don't have time on his side he should have been fighting these type of guys years ago. So, you know, the clock's ticking. Just like, you know, Lomachenko, he, he decided to stay an amateur for so long. The clock's ticking. These guys are getting older and older. You know, you're not Shakur Stevenson's age. You're not Ryan Garcia, Joey Spencer's age, right? Where you're at the age where you need to be fighting to close up the last port part of your legacy, 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 legacy. Black excellency. Um, let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section again. If you like what I'm doing, smash the like button. Hit that thumbs up. We unpack coming to you live. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.